Are you stuck on the hamster wheel feeling like you never have enough time to do what you actually want to do in ministry? Well, then stick around because we're talking about time management today on the Ministry Coach Podcast. Welcome to the Ministry Coach Podcast, where we bring you weekly tips and tactics to help you fast track the growth and health of your youth ministry. My name is Jeff Lascola. This is Kristen Lascola. And today we're going over a topic that I know personally I could use a lot of help with, so I'm going to be taking copious, copious notes. notes. By the way, the only time the word copious is ever used is if you're talking about notes. Sometimes I feel like people have said like copious amounts of... Notes. Something. <laughs> it's always notes. <laughs> okay, 95% notes. Yeah. Maybe copious was meant for notes. I guess so. Well, I'm going to be taking copious notes because we're talking about time management, something I do struggle with, I Ooh. think. Okay, so time management. And this is not by any means like I am perfect at this. So let me teach you. But over the years, I feel like I've gotten my rhythm down to make sure I accomplish everything I set out to do. Mm -hmm. So one of our associate past or executive pastors at North coast church, I can just hear him in my head. He like has dripped this phrase into conversation so much that he says, if you're not, if you're not intentional with your time, you'll end up always taking care of the urgent not the important. Mm -hmm. And then what happens if you're only taking care of the urgent and the what has to be done right now, you get kind of stuck on like this little hamster wheel, I feel like, mm -hmm. and you're just like maintaining status quo and you become a lot more of a manager than a leader. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're listening to this podcast, it's not like youth ministry managers, like we don't, want to be managers. We right. don't want to manage things. We want to lead things. But if we are just putting out fires or meeting deadlines in the nick of time or doing just what needs to be done to get by, and then we're like, huh, I don't have time for anything else. I never get to anything that is important to me. That's sort of a recipe. Well, maybe to get fired, hopefully <laughs> not, but, um, burnout. Yeah. Um, and just like really, really low satisfaction with your job. You know, I don't think we're meant to just skate by like, that's just not very inspirational, but right. a lot of us just feel so trapped. You probably feel like I do like just so busy that there's a million things. Oh yeah. I'd love to read a book or do this or do that. Like who has the time? Right. So we're going to talk about that today of like, well, maybe you have a little more margin than you think, because let me tell you, I have worked full time for a very long time. I have two kids, you know, sometimes I hear people say like, well, I have kids or, Oh, you know, like, but we have two young kids, full-time job, we have our own business on the side right. and it's either sink or swim. Like you have to learn how to manage it. So this is what I've kind of learned over the years. So margin, that's what our goal is. We want margin because without that, we can't be creative. We can't have vision. We don't have any dreams, you know, uh, we're just going to stay. And we, we absolutely never can allow ourselves to be interrupted. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you have no margin and interruption comes, you're like, ah, get out of here, <laughs> you know, but people are usually an interruption, especially yeah. as pastors. We can't put people off, you know, well, I've got a budget to do your problem can wait. No, we should have margin in our schedule to communicate with people. That's our job. Got it. All right. So number one, start with your calendar. Okay. I've told you before I'm old fashioned. I like a day planner, a year planner. It's paper and it has tabs that go through the months. And I see, cause I'm such a visual person when it's in my phone, it just doesn't map in my brain mm -hmm. the same way as holding it and interacting with it. I don't know why. So I, First start with my calendar and I map out every big event that I have for the year. Things that I know are going to happen for sure. 
like camps. Yeah. Like I know for like sure that. I'm having a winter camp. I know for sure this big event, this big event, this big event happened in the spring. I know for sure summer camp. I know for sure I'm speaking at this thing. I know for sure I'm going here, like those big things. And that kind of gives me like a skeleton for mm -hmm. my schedule. Okay. So even so far as like my volunteers birthdays or staff birthdays, just things I need to know. Remember it kind of sets the stage for the year, um, gives you something to work with. So then you get down a little like number two, you go a little deeper and now you start to look week by week. So now we're actually living life. Okay. So week by week, let's go through the days and I'm just going to give you sort of a layout, a map, a blueprint, if you will, an example of what a successful week for me would look like to use my time really well. Some weeks I nail it. Some weeks I fail it. Hey. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> and I rhyme oh, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Nope. Okay. Close. I'm a loser. All right. <laughs> Monday. Here it is. It's a fresh week. Monday, endless possibilities. Yeah. <laughs> we can do anything on Monday. All right. Some people are like, Monday's the worst, a case of the Mondays. And I'm like, no, I see Monday as like, got to set the tone. All right. You snap like a mom. <laughs> <laughs> You snap the way you dance. Yeah. I'm cool. I'm hip. I'm cool. I'm a mom. All right. Whatever. All right. So you look at your week, but guess what? Remember what number one was, Jeff? Calendars. Yeah. So now I'm looking at my week, but oh no, not just the week in front of me. I have done my calendar. So I'm going to look ahead two, three four weeks and see what needs to be done this week for the week, four weeks from now, because say I look at my calendar, I'm like, Oh shoot. Uh, in six weeks, I have an all nighter. You know what I could do today for that? Or this week I can make sure my buses are locked in. I can make sure my contract at the ice rink is done and I can put a deposit in mm -hmm. and maybe I can come up with a cool flyer and get my permission slip done. So I'm going to put some preliminary like foundations down for that far off event. And then I'm going to look now a little more close to home of like, well, what do I really have to do this week? And I'm going to make a list of everything professionally and personally that I'd like to get done. There's two categories for this. Some are, this absolutely has to get done this week. And the other ones are, this would be really nice if it were done this week. And if I don't get it done this week, it's probably going to be high priority next week. So we all have to have a sermon. We all have to have program. We all have to have communication go out. Those are just weekly like rhythms that that's a given. Those are things that have to happen. So those will go on my to-do list mostly because I just love checking them off because I have to do them anyways might as well get a little rush of checking <laughs> off something from my list but then there's those things that it's like hey this will move me now more into that category of taking care of important not just urgent so you know examples of that are like I need to recruit some more people for my safety team well is my program going to crumble if that doesn't happen not today, but eventually. So it's like, those are like the important kind of things that it's like, Oh, those are easy to kind of want to put off, mm. but get those kinds of things on your list that you're looking at the future of like, Hey, these are the things I need to keep putting in place. And if you're having trouble coming up with those things, start to think of your ministry in categories. Like I'll think of like, what do parents need this week? What do student lead student leaders need this week? What do students need this week? What do volunteers? What does my safety team? What is my senior pastor? Like you start to think through those categories of like, oh yeah, they asked me to come up with this. Let me put that on my list. So you've got your Monday list, everything you're going to try to accomplish for the future. And for this week, as you look at that list, you could either be really depressed or really excited. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go Monday. Or like, oh my gosh, I hate my week already. But one thing that you might want to do is then after you take that list of this is what needs to be done, think of what 
could go to your staff if you have one. So what I used to do is I'd have my Monday list and then I'd look at it and I had a really high capacity intern and I would give her weekly goals for this week. And she had a whole week to do them, but it was things like make the camp deposit, finish camp signups, um, stuff that it didn't matter who did them. Mm -hmm. They just needed to get done. And then making sure I didn't give just all tasks, right. like making sure there's creative elements in there too, like make a logo for the all nighter or, you know, mix it up, not just like tons of like office heavy work. So looking at what can somebody else do? And then what would somebody else like to do mm -hmm. and try to give some stuff away or that are good at doing as well. Exactly. Yeah. Like what does your, like, I have a guy, he's great at videos, you know, like give that task away. Cause it'll probably turn out way better. So looking at that, what does, what do you need to give out? Okay. So then you're starting to do your tasks. You're working away at your list. One sneaky thing that is a time suck getting sucked into communication. So communication is super important, but what happens is sometimes you'll be returning and checking emails for like 45 minutes and you're like, where did my day go? Mm -hmm. Or people are texting you and all of a sudden you spent way too much time doing that. So here's a little method I like discipline myself with. I do a task, I check it off. Then I say, all right, for the next 15 minutes, I'm doing communication. Whether Does it doesn't matter how big of a task that is. What if it's something really easy? Well, if it's like, take out the trash, you know, maybe I'll do a <laughs> few things or you could time it. Like I'm going to do an hour of work okay. and then 15 minutes of email just to break it up. Cause if sometimes you just get task fatigue too, or it's just like, ugh. well, sometimes breaking that up with like, all right, correspondence, like who's texted me that mm -hmm. hasn't heard back. Who's DM me that needs to hear back. Who's in my email that needs to hear back. And making sure that you keep that kind of on your day rotation because people should be hearing back from you within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. If you want to lose a lot of chips relationally, don't respond to people. And worse, uh, you know what Chris, our, our pastor said the other day that I'm like, that is so true. He said, you need to respond to parents who email you and call you because in very many ways, they pay your salary. Yeah. He's like, so don't put those people off. They are stakeholders in your ministry and they deserve your time and attention. I'm like, <laughs> so make sure people, especially people who are paying your salary are hearing back from you. So weave that into your day, task, communication, task, communication, and kind of build in that rhythm. And so another Two tricks I learned from one of my favorite pastors, Craig Groeschel, who listens to this podcast all the time. Thanks, Craig. Hey, Craig. Lunch? No. You want to know why? Because Craig doesn't do lunch with people. Lunch is for suckers. <laughs> so that's a huge time save. He says, I don't do lunch out. I don't go to lunch. I don't do lunch with people. He says, I eat lunch in my office. I kind of work through it, which kind of sounds sad and pathetic. Pathetic, and I'll get to why it's not in a minute. But if you, and this is what I do, I number one, you save money and eat healthier, but that's a different podcast. If you eat lunch on your own, kind of work through it, do mindless stuff like check email, or sometimes I like will put together a pro presenter thing or make a game slide, something that's like doesn't require a ton of brain mm -hmm. work. You save between five and eight hours a week. Yeah. If you're leaving the office, you figure yeah. it's 15 minutes, wherever you're going, 15 minutes back and however long you're well, going to be and there. And imagine going with someone right. and you're talking, you hang out a little bit. Now there's something to be said for making time for a relationship right. and I'm going to get to that. So it's not just like work, work, work. Nobody can talk to you, but there are days where it's like, I just got to get stuff done. I yeah. don't have time to take an hour, hour and a half for lunch. So that's what Craig Rochelle says. The other trick Craig Rochelle, I kind of learned from him was he says when he has a meeting with someone or something he has to talk face to face, he goes to them. So instead of saying, Hey, come to my office, he goes to theirs. He said, because then I can leave when I'm ready to leave, mm -hmm. but you can't really kick someone out of your office. Right. Someone who's just going to sit there and talk and talk and yeah. talk and talk. And you're like, Oh my gosh, my work day is going to be over in a half hour. Like leave, please. I have so much to do. <laughs> and you don't want to be rude. And right. so you sit there and you talk because 
you can't treat people like an interruption, but he's like, you know, I have a little bit more control if I go to them and then I can be like, all right, well, thanks. And then I can leave. So anyways, those are a couple time saving tricks from Craig. So that kind of is Monday with a few little tips, you know, thrown in there for you. So then my week goes to Tuesday. All right. So Tuesday is my program day. And so I kind of like everything stops and I focus a hundred percent of my time and energy on making my program great. Everything I do that day centers around that. So, you know, you can put that stuff on your to-do list Mm -hmm. on Monday. You know, you need a video, you need your message, you need your talk sheet, you need communication and blah, 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 whatever you need to make your program great on your program day. Focus on that. Did you just talk through a belch? Um, It was a very (laughs) tiny belch. Not impressive. It was very airy. (laughs) Do you guys probably don't know this, listeners, but I am the burping queen. Yeah. And you want to know how many people will say I taught them, like, they'll be like, I burp all the time now because I hung out with you so much (laughs) and it just was normal. Shame on you. But... Who was the one who taught you how to speak when you're belching? Jeff. It was a skill I never had before. I yeah. said an entire sentence today in a belch. You're welcome. <laughs> we are a kindred <laughs> spirit. <laughs> you're a pig. All right. Okay. So now we're at Wednesday. All right. So Wednesday, when I get in, I do any follow-up from the night before. That could mean a lot of things. Maybe I didn't put everything away that I was supposed to, (laughs) or maybe, um, there was like a weird conversation and I need to tell a leader about it and I need to call them or make sure uh, maybe a kid had a bad night and I want to call their parent and follow up like, Hey, how's so-and-so doing, Mm -hmm. you know, and you want to do that very timely. You never want a parent to have to reach out to you for something that happened that you know about. Like if you didn't know and they're like, Hey, just want to let you know something, blah, blah, blah. But if like you were involved with it and the parent, you want to reach out to them first. And then Wednesday, um, the other focus as you're going through your to-do list. Also, it's time to get ready for the weekend. All right. So this is when you start getting ready for your weekend program. You're working on your message. You got your game. You're, you know, maybe doing game supplies, getting your room ready, stuff like that. So you try to do as much weekend as you can on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, this day, anything you didn't get done for the weekend, like maybe you just want to touch up your sermon a little bit, but this is the best day. Thursday is my favorite, favorite day because this is the day to dream. This is the day that hopefully your to-do list can be done maybe before lunch. And Mm. then everything after lunch, like the next few hours is when you sit down and either do some kind of self-development thing, like read a great book or do a good study or do a research on something that you're interested in for ministry, Mm -hmm. not just, you know, (laughs) parasailing, (laughs) Mm. black holes. This is where like the margin really will pay off. You can do future planning, future thinking. This is the time of my week where I've come up with, Hey, we need to do this. Mm. And then I'll even put some wheels to it right then of like, I'm going to send an email and see if I can get this off the ground a little bit today. Or, you know, why don't we do this anymore? I'm going to make a new logo for that. Or, you know, it just gives you time of like, what do I need or want to do? Or like this, this thing needs to be cleaned out and organized what's in here. Mm -hmm. And then you discover we have tons of water balloons and I don't need to go get it. Yeah. Cause if you don't set any time aside for future planning, you're basically going to be doing the same thing forever. Exactly. That's what I mean where we started. It's like, you're always just taking care of tasks and the urgent, but if you discipline yourself, that's why you don't take a lunch because Thursday, maybe it's relationship day. Mm -hmm. And you're like, you know what? I am going to take so-and-so to coffee. Like I haven't hung out with this leader in a while. Maybe we can go to coffee or I haven't connected with our high school pastor in a while. I need to kind of catch up with what's going on in their world. And no one has program on Thursday at our campus. So it's like no one else is focused on that. And so it's a really good time. Like, Hey, all the social things I said no to Monday through Wednesday, 
now I can maybe kind of fill that in. And then make sure you catch up on any loose ends of communication. Like maybe you've been putting off like a hard phone call or like just something like maybe a little more sermon prep of like, oh, this person would have a lot to say on this. Maybe I'll give them a call or Mm -hmm. they can help me, blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of the week. And then, you know, Friday would be a day off. And Saturday, depends if you have a Saturday night service, it'd be a semi day off. And then you're at Sunday, which is, you know, your program day, but hopefully you're all ready to go. So you just turn on the lights, you know, and you're, you're mostly ready and you don't have to scramble at the last minute. And so to end, here's a couple, I don't know, pro tips or troubleshooting things. One extreme time saver that I have found is to plan ahead things you can plan ahead. Meaning you can plan your games three months, four months out. Mm -hmm. So you can come up with a game calendar and you can kind of look at it and go, oh, let's do like an up and front game, then a run around game, then an outside game, then a, you know, small group game. And you can kind of hit all of your categories And then you're not sitting there on your program day like, what game should we play? Oh, I would play this. Too bad we don't have like pool noodles. I would have ordered them. Like you're already ahead of the game. Like, But if you are in that position, check out the last episode we did on no prep games. Yeah. Last minute games. In a pinch. Yeah. You know, there's always that. But ideally you'd have that planned out and not have to worry. Another thing planning out. Like, I'll just sit there and like look on YouTube for like a funny video. And it's like, oh, no, that one's too long. Or no, that one like is mildly inappropriate or no, you know. (laughs) And so if you just sit down and like maybe you spend that Thursday margin time and just say, all right, this Thursday, I'm getting all my videos for like the next three months done. Mm -hmm. So I just plug and play. I'm getting all my games done. And then the other one is planning your series in advance. And so you know what you're going to be talking about. I know there's some curriculums that they'll do like the whole year, you know, um, if you don't own those, that's fine. You can just kind of plan out, Hey, in February, we're going to do this. And you can kind of, then you have like a broad perspective of, Whoa, we did really topical here. Maybe we should do a book study here. or Oh, we haven't hit on, uh, this in a long time and you can kind of map it out. So those are, those are things that have to get done. But doing them all in bulk mm-hmm. is a real big time saver. Batching it. Yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that funny? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And then lastly, just some troubleshooting. If you are still pulling your hair out and you're desperate and you're like, I don't know. Where, I can't do this. Like, I don't know where, where the time goes. Here's a couple questions. Number one, have you ever done a time audit? I did a time audit well, maybe two or three times. And it's kind of annoying, but it gives you a perspective of where your time is going. Like maybe you think you're spending 15 minutes on email, but you really are spending an hour and a half Mm -hmm. and you're like, now it's lunchtime. And now I, you know, so I think you can find them online or just make a little sheet of like the hours and just write down like what you did. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do it forever. Do it for like a week and then kind of assess like where, Like if you feel like you can't get it all done, maybe there is a hidden time suck in there. And then here's some other questions to ask. Like Jeff, um, was having trouble like fitting it all in. And so he just started waking up earlier and sometimes it's a hit. Sometimes it's a miss (laughs) if the dogs are bugging him and stuff. Kids wake up early. That's been huge for me. And I remember early on, it was hard, like waking up an hour, hour and a half before I normally would. Your body's like, what are you doing? And, And it was really hard to get going. But now I feel like my body is wired where I'm up usually before my alarm goes off and I don't feel it. Like I kept on thinking, well, yeah, I wake up an hour and a half early. I'm going to be an hour and a half more tired as you yawn. I'm tired just <laughs> hearing you talk about it. As I drone on and on. No, I but just I kept imagine on thinking getting like, up at like six. I'll go like, I'm thinking like, well, I'm just going to be ready to go to bed an hour and a half earlier, but I, I'm not. And I, I feel like all it was is just changing your body's pattern but it's been huge yeah and i can tell like you feel better and like you're motivated and you don't seem as stressed and maybe that might not be for everyone maybe they're like i wake up at 5 a.m and i still have no time so it's just a question if you're if you can buy yourself another hour by getting up an hour earlier 
that could be where your time is. The other question, where am I getting distracted? And that hopefully your time audit would be able to answer that question for you. It's amazing how fast time goes when you're on like if it's just social media or like all of a sudden t- like time or, or like TikTok, you can spend, I know you don't watch it, but those videos, like they just go so fast and they're so entertaining. And then all of a sudden you're like, that was a half an hour, you know? Yeah. So where are you getting distracted? Kind of the question of, we sort of already talked about what can I delegate mm-hmm. if you feel like I just can't get it all done? Well, Are there things that you shouldn't be doing that you are doing or things that maybe have run their course? And you're like, you know what? We don't really need to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Like we used to send out this parent newsletter and it was like, I don't think we need to do this. I think just an email of like, here's what you need to know for the week. But like we would just add way too much information in there that it was like. It seemed like a good idea at the time, but it was like, we're spending a lot of time. And I just think the value versus the time spent is not, we're not winning, you know? Um, Are you overcommitted? Kind of what you were talking about of like, are there things that you just need to say no to and maybe risk disappointing somebody, you know, especially like, it sounds so selfish, but if you're in a season where you have a lot of margin and can give yourself away and give your time away, do. But then if you're in a season where maybe you have young kids and you're, you know, working full time and trying to hold it all together, like you might not be able to do one-on-one coaching with an old student who's now in high school. Like Mm -hmm. you might not be able to say yes to those kinds of awesome opportunities, you know, or I don't know. That's just an example, but are you overcommitted somewhere? And then are you doing things that are actually important, moving you forward to where you want to be? And that, I guess that is the big question that this whole episode has been centering around is, are you able to do things that give life to you as a pastor, to your ministry that make you feel like you're in your A game and not just like working away behind a computer? We have days where we have to just make things run, but you're going to burn out and you're going to hate your job and you're probably going to hate everyone you work with and who works with, (laughs) you know, like if you just are like resentful and you just get bitter, like all I do is because that's not why you got into ministry. So take the reins, take responsibility of your time and make it work for you. Yeah. Get off the hamster wheel. Yeah. You're Say, I'm in charge. I'm in charge of my time because you are, you know. So a question for you guys is, won't you write in the comments, what have you done to help with your time management? What are some things, some tips that you found, whether it's blocking your time or, you know, things like that. And if you got a lot of value out of this episode, make sure you like it and hit subscribe. For those of you listening on the podcast, we appreciate you and make sure you're subscribing there too. And we will see you guys next time.